Welcome back to our evaluation course and in the previous video we discussed that we have a list of advantages, a list of imbalances that we should check before making a decision. Yes, what's important in evaluation is that it helps us to find the right plan and uh, mainly to make a decision what move to do now or what way should our game go. And uh, this time I want to discuss like how grandmasters evaluate the position. Because from the previous video you could get the wrong understanding of the whole process of playing chess. Because uh, actually grandmasters don't evaluate the position after any moves, after each move. They do it only in critical moments. And this is something you should learn to uh, how to find where is whether it's a critical moment or not. It's something that uh, differentiates strong players from uh, less stronger ones. And also, what's interesting about grandmasters is that they, of course, uh, don't go through this waste consciously, like. Okay, let's try to think about the king safety. Then let's try to think about the material. Let's count how many pawns do I have, how many pawns my opponent does. No, they don't do that at all. Sometimes they can do that, though, but it's just in such messy and difficult positions where they are really struggle to find. Uh, move and they try to help themselves by doing that. And uh, why do I teach you to go through the list of imbalances even though I say that grandmasters don't do that? It's because they used to do that in childhood or when they were growing up, like growing up like uh, chess players. So you just learn how to do that first and then once you are really experienced, you start doing that unconsciously and it becomes really easy for you. So our plan is to go through all of the imbalances in this course and make you more uh, experienced in evaluating them. So then in your games you will be able to do that more or less uh, without much effort. So. This time I don't want this video to be just a talking video, even though it probably should have been th that. So I want to show you one of my games. Uh, you may argue that I am not a grandmaster, so I don't know how grandmasters really think. But the point is that this game was played against an extremely strong grandmaster. A top level player, maybe a future world champion, but who knows? At least Russians hope that he will be one. Uh, it's Jan Nepomniachi, a very strong grandmaster, top player, top 10. And um, this game was played in a rapid chess in 2018. And we reached this position which is quite an interesting one. And here I played a very nice idea. I played c4 here as white. And it turned out to be the top choice of an engines. Like it's probably the best move in the position, even though it doesn't look like that. What was my idea is that here I say that this d5 square is really nice for my knight. So I want to take the whole control of the square and now my knight just wants to sorry come to c3 and to d5 and this is gonna be pretty nice for me and I realized that and played c4 uh, even though it looks like my pieces are not well placed I'm not uh, well developed but I played c4 here not developing them uh, anyway but uh, What's interesting here is that also we don't like go through those things. We try to focus on the main imbalance in the position. And I thought that it would be this weak square. 
So if I am able to reach the square, it's gonna be really nice for me. He played bishop g4, trying to provoke me to go f3, which I did. Bishop e6, now my pawn on c4 is hanging, queen e2. So here I want you to pay attention to that, the fact that he, after c4 was played, uh, played bishop g4 with a tempo, now bishop e6 with a tempo, queen e2. And in this position, he made a really nice decision. This was really time for most of people to sit and calculate or try to make a really good decision because this is a critical moment here. I've, and uh, of course you can pause the video and try to guess what Jan Nepomneshi did. And uh, after the game we had a, bit, a little talk about this game and he said that for him it was obvious that if my knight just comes to d5 this is gonna be strategically lost for black. Imagine he said he would be strategically lost after a knight comes to d5. So he realized that only two moves and I would be winning strategically. So he had to find something really good here. And uh, yes, he could go knight h5. It would be probably interesting. So he wants to jump to f4. He wants to play f5. So let's say I go like this. Now my knight comes here. 4 g4. And then I'm, I can go to d5 with my uh, knight whenever I want. So, yeah, maybe I can go a5 here. Maybe I can go rook d1 here. Maybe I can jump immediately. I have a pleasant choice. So the computer thinks that this position is more or less equal. White is slightly better. But for him it was like strategically lost. Okay, so instead of knight h5, I don't say that his move was the best in the position, but it was really good practical decision. He wanted to change the direction that the game was going for. So he played b7, b5 here. Such a nice sacrifice. Uh, so if I take with my pawn on b5, uh, you can also try to think what would you do here in this position. So the point is that there is this tactics. Bishop takes c4 and now if queen takes then a takes b5. And it turns out that your queen is hanging and your rook is hanging and you are not in time to save both of them. So black is just winning here. So imagine he found this tactics to make his strategic position better. And um, probably if I play b3, he would go for b4, let's say, and now my knight wouldn't be able to reach this c3 square. And if I try to go like this, he would be in time to play knight h5, knight f4, um, sorry, f5. That line with knight h5, b4, but in a much, more, much, much better situation for black now. Here I misplayed, I played knight d2, uh, probably should have maybe still taken here and then b6 with an end game like this, but it's still something better for him than the position if my knight would be on d5 supported by two of these pawns. So you see that his strategy worked pretty well here, especially since I started play making bad moves. Knight d7, uh, now I took, took, so I thought that I could take this pawn on b5 now and my knight would jump c4 and uh, maybe this position would be really good for me, but here he played c4, another, another very strong move, now my b5 pawn would lost because there is a check coming and also he wants to play knight c5, so his knight can be activated this way, his rook can go to a1 at some point. So you see that he just started activating his pieces and didn't let me to uh, get that strategically winning position. 
So I think this is a very nice and lesson, a very instructive uh, moment from Jan Nipomniachi. And uh, uh, yes, then he won the game more or less easily. And um, this was the critical moment. If he wouldn't find b5 here, the game could be much more tough for him. So, yes, this is more or less how the Grandmasters think. He tr didn't try to go through the list of imbalances. He just knew that if knight appears here, it's going to be very difficult for black. So he knew it from his uh, experience. He had a lot of games like this, a lot of he analyzed a lot of positions more or less similar to this one. So um, this pattern recognition helped him to realize that he needed to do something here as soon as possible. And uh, our plan is to go through the list of imbalances in the future lessons. And uh, then I hope you will be able to choose the main one from the uh, imbalances to focus on them and uh, it will help you in your games with planning and uh, with making good and brilliant like this move b5 decisions so see you in the next videos